First of all, I would, I would like to thank the organizers uh, to give me this opportunity to uh, talk here for you. And today I wish uh, to present my recent work about uh, the heterogeneity in, in the uh, heterogeneity, how heterogeneous organization can uh, alter uh, uh, the dynamic, local dynamic of the chromosome. And on top of that, how it can lead to anomalous diffusions. And to do uh, to this end, uh, we will use a polymer physics model uh, to investigate the local chromosome dynamic. It is known that it is well known that the chromosome dynamic uh, is very important. is, is a, has a crucial role on the uh, cell functions like. Uh, gene regulation and uh, cell differentiation. And in the recent years, this aspect of the chromosome have been gained a lot of attraction from the uh, experimental side or theoretical side. One of the main techniques has been used for uh, quantify the uh, mobility and dynamic of the uh, chromatin is, is that uh, by uh, tracing a single loci along the uh, live experiment. And by that, uh, you will be able to uh, compute a mean square displacement of the loci over time. And uh, we know that the MSD uh, follows a scaling law uh, like this formula and uh, which D is the diffusion constant and alpha is diffusion exponent. And uh, if you look at the literature, you will find a lot of uh, variety of the uh, MST curves for chromosome depending on the organisms and also uh, cell line and even uh, the position along the genome. And here I brought you a bunch of them. There's also another way to uh, quantify the chromosome dynamic, which is the uh, monitoring uh, uh, histone density, monitoring histone density in the live experiment and also uh, with this, with this technique, you will be able to uh, uh, capturing the dynamic of many loci at once. And the main message of this, uh, the main result of these techniques is that uh, the mobility is not uniform along the, along the chain, along the uh, chromosome, and it's highly heterogeneous and it depends on the uh, locus, where you are and what is around the, uh, around the locus. And besides these experiments, there is also a lot, of, a lot of theoretical works that also trying to address this, uh, this feature of the uh, chromosome. And the question is that, uh, what is the relation between the uh, heterogeneous structure and heterogeneous uh, dynamics of the chromosome. Is there any coupling between these two uh, different aspects of the uh, chromosome or not? Okay, uh, uh, to understand this, we started by, uh, by a, a polymer model, a coarse grain uh, polymer model, which decorated by different uh, structural properties like tag and the compartments and the CTCF loop, uh, uh, CTCF mediated loops. And uh, uh, with these parameters, you, uh, we will be able to uh, reproduce high map for two different examples here, mouse uh, embryonic stem cell, uh, chromosome one, 
a portion of this chromosome, a 23 megabase per portion. And also uh, Josephila embryo cell uh, chromosome arm 2 And you can see the accuracy of the model. Okay, in order to find the dynamic properties uh, of the model, we try to uh, we try to compute average MSD. I mean, average over all the populations for all the monomers for all the monomers along the chain. And uh, we have this for uh, Josephila and for mouse ESO and. As a reference, we also uh, simulating a null model, which is there is no interaction in this case. And uh, to see what is the effect of the heterogeneous uh, structure in the heteropolymer model. And as you can see here, uh, the dynamic over, uh, over the monomers, there is a huge heterogeneity here for the uh, Josephila case, and it is, it is weaker for uh, mouse, for the mouse ESO. And if you look at the uh, null model, there is no heterogeneity, or even it's very weak heterogeneity, which is uh, due to uh, actually uh, trajectory, finite trajectory lens. Okay. And uh, now uh, we found that uh, heterogeneous, heterogeneous, heterogeneity in the structure can lead to heterogeneous in the dynamics. But the question here is that uh, what, what is the contribution of different layers? In order to understand that, uh, we try to uh, dissecting the different layers. At first try, we uh, uh, we try to uh, decompose the monomers in the A and B compartments for two different models that we have. And as you can see for the Josephila case, we see a clear difference between A and B compartments. Actually, A compartments are much more faster than B compartments, and uh, it is uh, consistent with the. Uh, if you if you look at the structure of the chromosome, you will see that uh, in this chromosome, because it's at the earliest stage and it's not very differentiated, an A compartment in this cell is very dynamic, and uh, we expected to uh, see. A, comp a compartment is uh, faster than B compartment. But for ESL, mouse ESL, as you can see here, there is no clear difference between A and B compartments, uh, which is also reflecting that uh, uh, we are at the uh, late stage and the cell is uh, differentiated. And the A and B compartments are um, completely segregated. Okay, uh, now we wanted to go to the TADS level a bit deeper. And uh, first of all, we see that uh, TADS in the mouse case are uh, a bit uh, less compacted than the uh, Josephila case. And you can quantify this by two different ways even by uh, contact probability intra versus inter TAD, or by uh, the distance between two loci intra or inter TAD, uh, TAD case for Josephila and mouse. And you can see uh, the prediction of our model to compare to the uh, prediction of the experiment by uh, FISH for Josephila case. And uh, by this, exp by this uh, quantity, we can uh, believe that hats in Josephila case are uh, compacted than mouse case. 
Okay. Uh, to quantify the effect of the TATs, we try to uh, uh, we try to select three, three probes, three different loci. Uh, one loci are in uh, out of the big TAT. Our target is in this in this TAT, and uh, one probe is out of the TAT. One probe is in the middle of the TAD and one probe is at the border of the TAD. And you can see the mobility of different TAD, different probes here. For the probe one, uh, we do not see any difference between the mobility of the probe one and null model. It means that uh, there is no changes in the mobility. But, but, uh, but for, uh, for uh, probe two and three, we see uh, a different behavior, which is anomaly use. It's not a uh, regular uh, mobility that we expected from the simple polymer model. Actually, here uh, we see a non monotonic behavior for uh, evolution of exponent. The exponent at shorter time scale is started by 0 0.5, which is expected. But at the middle time, it's less than 0 0.5 and at the larger time scale it's uh, higher than 0 0.5 which is totally interesting for polymer in terms of polymer physics okay and um, uh, we we reasoned to uh, uh, to show that uh, the time evolution of the exponent for different models Actually, here uh, for Josephila, we see highly heterogeneity along the uh, genomic distance, and it is less clear for a uh, mouse, and there is no heterogeneity for the null model. Actually, if we be, if we uh, uh, be precise, we can see some regions which are uh, there is anomaly use diffusion actually. It's uh, there is non monotonic behavior is starting from the 0 0.5 decreasing and increasing, and I just uh, I just showed here here uh, some of them by arrows, and if we are to zoom in two examples here, you can see uh, this anomaly use behavior are interestingly. Uh, Coexistent with the TADs, with the highly, highly compacted TADs. Actually, here it's, it's very clear that uh, these TADs in the region uh, of these TADs, we have a, uh, anomalous behavior, which out of the TAD, there is no anomalous behavior. And for this TAD, which is less compacted, we do, we not, we do not see the behavior. Actually, we see the behavior, but it's very weak, and uh, it's not very clear for to quantify this. Okay, another interesting uh, interesting result of our model is that uh, there is a co uh, coherent motion of loci inside the tats. Here, uh, this map is uh, the pair correlation between the motion of two loci. Actually, it each, uh, each component of this map uh, showing the, representing the correlation of motion of two different loci. And as you can see here for the mouse and for Josephila case, we see clearly uh, much higher correlation inside the TAD, uh, intra TAD compared to the inter TAD. And uh, this effect is stronger for Josephila compared to the mass. And by increasing the time, we see uh, the uh, correlation is increasing, which is reflecting the uh, moving of the center of mass. OK, by combining these two results to each other, uh, we can conclude that by increasing the interaction, Actually, we are decreasing the uh, we are increasing the compaction as well, and the 
it will decrease the mobility, but it will gain the coherent motion. And if you if you look at the uh, if you look at the mobility of the loci in these different cases, we see that uh, the monomers in the compacted regions at the short time scale are moving individually like uh, uh, like null model, but at the longer time scale, they wanted to follow the cent their center of mass. There is a cross section, cr uh, crossover between uh, this regime and this regime. Actually, this non uh, this anomalous behavior is a crossover between these two regimes. And uh, and we can uh, we can uh, make a coupling between the structure and dynamic here. Uh, by increasing by increasing the compaction here you will see uh, the strength of uh, crossover is increasing by I mean by a strange is that sooner it will get the uh, center of mass motion of the center of mass and uh, you can see that it's not depend on the model actually it's uh, this behavior is somehow universal and, and, and for mouse and for Josephilla, they are following same uh, curve and same behavior. And uh, at the end, uh, we try to, we try to, we try to compare our uh, prediction, our, um, the prediction of our model to the existed uh, data for MSD. And here you can see that how uh, our model is able to predict the uh, the data, the experimental data for this case and this case, two different cases, which are uh, completely different uh, organisms and different cell line. And uh, at the end, the take home messages is that uh, we investigate the uh, heterogeneous dynamic by introducing a novel heteropolymer model. And uh, we see that uh, we found that uh, the hetero heterogeneity and local mobility of chromosome are driven by uh, heterogeneity on the structure. We also found that the loci in highly compacted tags have a uh, coherent motion and also a glassy dynamic. And at the end, uh, we found that anomalous diffusion with exponent higher than 0 0.5, which are which was very in interesting and very strange, are transient. And uh, this is due to uh, crossover of the mobility with center of mass. And at the end, I wanted to thank. Uh, uh, Physical Biology of Chromatin Lab uh, at LBMC ANS de Lyon, and especially Daniel Just, uh, my PI. And also, I would, I would like to thank uh, Marco Di Stefano, uh, which helped me a lot uh, to uh, analyze the high C, experimental high C map. Also, Karstin Bistriki and uh, Hitam Shaban. Uh, for very helpful discussion. And I would like to thank you for listening and I would like to take the questions. You found a lot of differences between mouse and drosophila. Yes. At all levels, actually, at which you looked. Do you have some um, biological explanations by physical uh, even explanations of what is uh, the difference, the, the conceptual difference uh, between mouse and drosophila? Is it is it that different sizes of 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 domains, or is it different concentrations of proteins? Conceptually, what is the main difference? That's a very good question. Uh, actually, the difference between drosophila and mouse embryonic stem cell is that uh, here. 
Uh, the main difference in our model is that the TADs in the Joseph Villa are much more compacted than the TADs in the mouse and embryonic stem cell. And another different uh, aspect is that uh, for the mouse embryonic stem cell, we expected uh, more com uh, compartmentalization than the Joseph Villa case. And these two, these two differences leads to this uh, differences in the uh, in the in the mobility uh, but if you wanted to be sure in the experiment uh, we do not have any experimental uh, proof for this one actually up to now and uh, yeah it's good to uh, it's good to to uh, test this uh, this prediction to, to experiment to see if there is also, is, the, is it the case in the experiment or not? Yeah, it's very nice talk. I had one question about this diffusion. So in particular, if you take a, a segment inside a TAD or even a lamin associated domain, do they actually diffuse or do they just fluctuate around an average position? Just like a, a, some bead on a spring they would just fluctuate around an average position, but do they have a center of mass motion because of the constraints or would they actually diffuse? Actually in our model, uh, because we are working on the uh, uh, periodic boundary condition, it's not uh, a constraint. Actually it can diffuse. There's no uh, constraint to the uh, polymer. Uh, but in the real situation, uh, because they are in the, for the lamina, because they are connected to the lamina, maybe they are uh, actually diffusing in the spur, which is uh, around the center of mass, I guess. But for, for our model, there is no constraint and they can diffuse. So uh, you, you characterized uh, this in, in terms of MSD and other parameters. Um, can you can you also characterize this uh, system um, in terms of the uh, differences in the persistent length, uh, uh, persistence length of of the of the nucleosome array or the persistent length of the um, chromatin fiber? Okay, let's say let the persistent length of of the of the array of of nucleosomes. Uh, yeah. Is it possible to see such differences? And what, what are they? Yes, actually that's a, again very good question. Uh, yeah, it will, it will uh, really impact on the dynamic, but uh, as you can see, we are in the regime. Uh, uh, we are in the coarse grain level and each monomer is, is corresponding to two KB uh, of the chromosome. Actually, at that, at that case, uh, at that resolution, I think uh, the persistence lens is not uh, very important, actually. Uh, if you want to capture the effect of the uh, persistence lens, maybe we need to go to a bit uh, finer resolution to capture the effect of the uh, uh, persistent lens and uh, stiffness, I think. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, thank you. And you think it, it's possible in terms of the, uh, so it would increase the, the time of, of the simulation and so on, so. Yeah, actually there is a, a, a couple of uh, work to, to quantify the effect of the persistent lens. And uh, yeah, uh, it it can it can really uh, change the uh, the mobility if you if you increase that uh, if you increase the stiffness it's really important for actually at the specific time uh, when uh, the MSD is the is near to the uh, cool lens. It's very important after the MSD is uh, passing the cool lens. 
uh, actually, uh, there is no important uh, for uh, um, actually it cannot uh, depend on the uh, on the stiffness anymore. Uh, there is a time scale for the for the effect of the persistence. So just one uh, quick question about the the heterogeneity of uh, the distribution of. Uh, domains in mouse versus Drosophila. So you say that Drosophila is in general more heterogeneous. Is it is it just because the average sizes of these domains are smaller? Uh, yes, actually average sizes are smaller. And if you look at the decay plot here, mm -hmm. for Drosophila here, uh, we see that decay plot is scaling by uh, minus 0 0.9. But for the mouse case, it's scaling by uh, minus one. Mm -hmm. It means that at very short uh, genomic distance, uh, for uh, for Josephilla case, it is much more compacted than uh, mouse case. Mm -hmm. And this effect, this difference, is reflecting here in the dynamic. Mm -hmm. And also in the uh, in the TADS compaction of the TADS, as you can see here, the TADS in the uh, Josephilla case are very compacted than the TADS in the mouse case, and this compaction level would impact on the dynamic of the uh, monomer inside the TADS. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, mm -hmm. Just to clarify on the biological side, so, so both the, the Drosophila cells are embryonic cells, and in mouse, it's it's mouse embryonic stem cells, right? Yeah. yeah. So they are comparable cell types, and you are saying that Drosophila uh, chromatin is in general more compact. Yeah. Do, do we know? Is it uh, is there some higher concentration of chromatin associated proteins of of the kind? Is there some very simple biochemical uh, explanation or correlation that uh, is associated with this higher compaction in Drosophila versus mouse. Uh, actually, uh, there is some explanation, not uh, not by uh, in the in terms of biology. Actually, there is some explanation in terms of uh, polymer physics model. We know that uh, for the uh, for the because uh, for the mouse embryonic stem cell compartments are uh, are too large compared to the uh, Josephilla case, and for this one because the compartments are bigger, and it uh, it could. Uh, decrease the compaction of the tads inside them actually because they are making a very big domains and into these big domains they are free to move and it can it can uh, reduce the compaction level of the tads there is some explanation regarding to the to this but i really don't know uh, yeah what is the biological Proof for this one. Mm 